All right, guys, so um, uploading this video. I'm not sure if this is going to be at the beginning or the end, but either way, uh, just to recap here, we put the radiator relocation kit on a uh, 2020 Seaforce 600 single seat. So I got the, uh, as I so eloquently call it, the dad box because it makes it look like a dad four wheeler, which I am a dad. So I guess uh, suits. Um, in reality, they didn't have the twin seater, and I ended up going with this one, um, to make a long story short. What we're here for is the radiator relocation kit. Um, there's a few things I want to touch on real quick, um, and then, uh, that's it. That's all I got for you. So anyway, uh, this is the Rival. The kit is made by Rival, and this is what we have here, Rival Power Sports. Okay, and it works for the single seater or the double seater. Okay, I'll just show you what we got. Now, I did mention that this kit is um, ordered through offroadarmor.com because there was no additional price, it was literally $359 out the door. In the video, there's a few things I mentioned. And I just wanted to touch real quick on them just to kind of drive home the point that they are kind of important. And one thing I didn't touch on. So first thing I wanted to touch on is it's not an overly complicated setup. It's pretty basic if you know what you're doing. Um, or you don't get easily uh, flustered, which is why I have my friend put it together essentially uh, for me. So there's a lot of hardware. There's a lot of nuts and bolts. And they're, they're different sizes for everything. You know, they're, they're everywhere. Um, so that can definitely get relatively confusing at times. The directions do a pretty decent job, but you have to make sure you sit and actually look at them closely several times to make sure you're understanding them correctly. That's the main thing. It's a process to put it together and you need to make sure you're looking closely. So last thing I wanted to touch on over here is, as you can see, back of the radiators right here we got these coolant lines and see that movement they fit in there relatively loosely now obviously there's a barb on the end of this line so they bite down pretty hard and they shouldn't come off but i do want to bring people to the realization that if you don't realize it that is hot coolant at you know 198 200 degrees flowing through those lines if that pops off it's coming back in your lap so i'm not a big fan of the way that is this shield is adjustable here you can kind of angle it down and hopefully stop that from happening but if you take proper precautions i'm assuming you could probably check these and retighten them um you know, maybe every couple of rides, just make sure they're tight, make sure they're snug. And hopefully if the clamp were to rust or loosen or, you know, give out, it would just be a little bit of a leak at first and not full-blown radiator hose with 15 PSI of pressure blowing back on you while you're driving. So, side note, important note, double check your clamps all the time. Make sure they're nice and snug, don't over tighten. Make sure you follow the directions on the hardware. That is a tricky assembly, but once you get the process rolling, it's pretty easy. Um, it ties into your stock radiator lines, so you don't actually have to remove any of the plastics on the side and run new lines up. It ties in, it tees in, in here as I showed you, with 90 degree elbows straight up. It includes plenty enough radiator hose, and we actually, as you can see, trimmed it back to uh, make it fit with another 90 degree elbow and then in the lower radiator hose that is included that is one piece pre-bent from the factory and there is no trimming necessary on that one and that one fits on real beautifully and snug um i mean like i said literally at the end of the day that's it just wanted to touch on those two points for you uh, i drained about a half a gallon of coolant out of it into a bowl i used two coffee filters and i filtered it i double filtered it got nothing out of it or got all the dirt out of it and i put it right back in the machine 
haven't had any issues. So that's where we are. Um, hopefully you guys enjoy the video or enjoy the video and uh, like, subscribe. I know I don't come out with a lot of content, but I'm not spending hundreds or thousands of dollars on this thing a year. I will keep you guys up to date with the latest CF Moto for the everyday owner, which is me. I'm not buying a new one every two, three years. I'm gonna just keep improving the one I have. So with that being said, if you have any questions, leave a comment, I'll get back to you right away. Um, that's pretty much it, man. I'm pretty excited to, to go out and, you know, get this thing in some dirt and a little bit of mud. You guys are ride safe, man. Uh, where's the rest of the directions of this? On the table. All right, got the Rival radiator kit for the 2020 C4 600. I found it online. I think it was for the 500 and the 600, but I got it from offroadarmor.com. And I got my buddy Joe installing it for me. And uh, as you can see, we had to remove the lower winch and the uh, both radiator hoses, the overflow. Um, remove the bolt holding in the brake reservoir and the fuse panel. Uh, remove the left side tire and the inner wheel well right here as you can see and it was able to slide right out from the left hand side. I did see this on another video that I found online that said it would slide out through the wheel well and it does. So this is where we're at so far with the rival kit. Um, thank God my buddy's doing this because it is a little tricky but it's pretty straightforward forward as far as mounting goes it's just the directions are a little kind of hard to decipher anyway uh it comes with extra wiring in case you need to extend your fan it comes with a uh, hose to extend your hose and all the hardware so this is where we are with the kit so far uh, everything's bolted together and uh your extra hose wiring connections and the radiator is actually out back soaking uh, to get clean. Or, or did we bring it back? Oh no, here we go. So here's the radiator that we pulled out. Looking good, nice and clean. And as you can see, when it's mounted, it should be up here, but um, taking it out was pretty straightforward. Like I said, came out through the left side wheel well um, the fan, when you unbolt it from the top, from all four, you unbolt it at the top here. And then at the bottom from each side wheel well, you can reach the bottom bolts. And then you have, that's when you have to remove the bolts for the, uh, that mount down the reservoir and the fuse panel. Bend that back and we were able to, it took, you know, extra set of hands, but we were able to pull the fan out through the top. With the fan gone, radiator just on bolts right from the top. And then it's, it sets in those holes down there. If you can see them. There you go. It sits in those holes. It popped up, slid, dropped down, and slid out the wheel well. There was, what, four bolts holding the winch in? Yep. Four, uh, 13s. 13s. Yeah, four 13s holding the winch in. Disconnected the winch. Had to cut a zip tie for the uh, pigtail, uh, the electrical connectors. Slide the winch to the side. And you have all this room right here to get the radiator out. And it literally did slide right out. Coolant looked good. There wasn't a lot of coolant. What is that? That's not even half a gallon. About half a gallon, I guess. About right half. So, um, not a ton. I'm sure there's more in the, in the motor, but it's not leaking or dripping anything out. And with the kit, one of the questions, some of the videos I'd seen what limited videos are available didn't explain was that the kit actually comes with this kit through rival if you notice these metal sleeves what they're doing is they're gonna sleeve you're gonna sleeve off this radiator hose right here and connect the radiator hose and then bring it up so you're gonna put that metal sleeve in there and then you're gonna connect the other radiator hose to that other end 
and then run that hose up. And that's how you're running the hoses. You don't actually have to trace this hose all the way down and pop it off down here at your fuel or at your uh, water pump. So he's placing it on now. Um, we'll check in. Check in. It's all done. Checking the fitment. So yeah, and the nice part about it is this is designed to work with your rack on. So you can see it's got spacers in here. So obviously your plastic, black plastic hood is gone, but your normal CF Moto hood will pop back on to protect everything from in there. And this will replace the black hood. And again, this is your ride. This is a kit by Rival. I purchased it from offroadarmor.com for $359. And the reason I did was because Offroad Armor did not charge anything else. So $359 was out the door price. When I went to Rival's website, they wanted um, like the same price, but then they, they were charging tax and shipping on top of it, and it was almost 400 This is just the radiator kit, by the way. No, no snorkels, just the radiator kit. All right, so Joe's got the connections done here. So uh, they're just 90-degree elbows. You can kind of see this one down here a little bit. Just 90 degree elbows. They fit in the stock tubes very loosely, but um, the clamps tighten up real tight and they're real snug in there. So um, these are the connections. And once the radiator's in place, then you can measure, cut, and connect to the radiator. So these are just two 90 degree elbows. And then we might need more, which there's plenty more, but when the radiator sits down, it'll connect in, he'll trim the lines. Um, use whatever elbows we need and we'll be done. All right, we got our finished product here. As you can see, my buddy Joe hooked it up. Looks pretty awesome. It's got some adjustments here, so you can adjust the pitch and height, and you can remove these top bolts here, flop it up so you can add fluid to it. And then it has this adjustable guard, which is kind of nice. It's got some pre-drilled holes in there in case you want to mount something to it. But uh, it allows you to get to your radiator uh, cap. And it also deflects some of the hot air blown off this thing. Um, we obviously professionally deleted <laughs> the top. And then we notched out a hole back here. And uh, put some rubber grommet around it to protect the wires or the cooling lines from chafing. And... Um, She's good to go. Everything seems to work pretty good. Um, I'm sure there'll be more I'll think of here later tonight, so I'll wait to upload the video.